When a child loses a parent, they become an orphan. When a wife loses her husband, she becomes a widow. But when a parent loses a child, it is such an indescribable pain and loss and void. There's actually no name for it. With us today is a lady here to share her experience. So welcome to Unscripted with me, Grace, from Radisson Blue in Arboretum. Hi, welcome to Unscripted. Thank you for making time for us as always. Special thanks to Radisson for hosting us. And with me is this beautiful lady, Marianne. Thank you. Welcome to Unscripted. Thank you so much. You thank you for lovely. having me. Thank no, you. Thank you for coming. I right. wanted to share your story with us. Yes. So let's begin with um, who is Marianne and what do you want guys to know about you? Why are you here today? Okay, I'm Marianne and I'm a mother of two. One is an angel, she's in heaven. Um, I wanted to narrate her story because mm -hmm. she passed on last year. So I, w I would like to just inspire people like to share her journey. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone is going through something. Yeah. I would just like to let them know like it's possible to heal Amen. and uh, like just to encourage them. So let's talk about, you called her your angel. What was her name okay. and how was the journey from pregnancy and having her? How was it like? Okay, her name was Mubese. Okay. She was actually Congolese. Oh. So I gave birth to her when I was uh, 22. Okay. She, I gave her, it was a normal delivery. So basically she had a heart mama, which was not a big deal because it mm. was treated by a cardiologist. Okay. So later problems started coming up when she was 15. What happened? She had gone for a camp, mm. a youth camp in church. Mm. So later, when she came back from the camp, we realized like she had a cough. Mm -hmm. So we just took it lightly, went to the pharmacy, bought some drugs. Mm. Then she became better. Later, the cough beca be started becoming persistent. Mm. So we were like, I. Then she lost a lot of weight. Mm. Like she lost a lot of weight. Yes, drastically. I was like, this is not normal. So that's when we went for some x rays and some uh, sputum tests. Okay. That's when she was discovered that uh, she had TB. And how was how did the drugs affect her after taking treatment for TB? Okay, we started the TB journey, which she took drugs for six months. After the six months, the TB did not go away. Mm. They said that it relapsed. So she had to take more drugs for six more months. Mm. That's like one year. And that shouldn't be the case? It shouldn't be the case. You shouldn't take TB drugs for more than six months. Okay. Yeah. Did that cause an alarm for you? Or yes, red flag? but mm. you see we were following orders because it was like when we were told it's a relapse, you just continue. We, we mm. had no knowledge about it. I understand. Yeah. But how was it for you seeing your daughter not getting better and just ailing and getting worse? Uh, it was very, very hard even seeing her. Like Also, she had just given up. She was always crying. Like she's like, but she, funny enough, she always kept saying that God is there. Yeah. So that's what encouraged me, and I told her, we'll just keep pushing together. When did you discover they had treated the wrong condition, or when did it get worse? When, when after the TB drugs, mm. that's when we went, we were like, I, they haven't, it hasn't still gone, and it's one year. Mm. So we were advised to go to a chest specialist. Okay. They did all the tests, like x-rays, uh, MRIs, all, all those things, then mm. they discovered it's now aspergillosis. That's now damaged lungs, so she had holes in the lungs. Oh, no. And funny enough, it's the TB drugs, because of the overuse of the TB drugs mm. causes a lot of damage. I see. So she, every day she would take drugs, now Which like for just five me. years. Wow. Continuous, continuous. So we just watched her just becoming weaker and weaker by the day. So there was no, what was the treatment? Just to take the, the drugs? The treatment was to just manage the condition, not to really? cure. Yeah. Actually, oh. there's a doctor who saw the, the test. She was like, how are you still alive? And you know, he's saying that in front of her. Wow. So she really teared up. She, sure. she was just discouraged every day, every day, just taking drugs. Did you seek a second opinion? Yeah, opinion? we did. We actually consulted like two chest specialists, but they kept saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how was that journey for the five years, just managing it the condition? Was, what it was, was that like? It was not easy. Because first of all, the, the, her insurance denied the cover. Mm. Yeah, so they wouldn't treat her. 
we had to keep looking for cash because also NHIF doesn't cover drugs. It only covers like the tests, like yeah. X-ray. So it was it's very expensive. difficult, very expensive. How bad were the low moments for her and for you, being her caregiver, her mother? Um, it was not easy because in the first place she was always in pain. Mm. And sometimes uh, she would just, we were told not to buy painkillers, but there was no way, like, she would actually buy secretly, because I told her, don't buy. But she would go, like, she, she's from school, mm -hmm. then she buys drugs. Then later she tells me I bought drugs. But actually, I was not at peace. Eh? Mm -hmm. When she was going to school, I used to be not at peace, because I was like, maybe I'd expect a call, like, she's fallen on the road. Mm -hmm. In fact, you I was know, surprised, so she could was, make it to school. Yes doing her regular things. Exactly. Wow. But it was a homeschool institution in I Gong see. Road. So she couldn't like do so hard stuff like a normal school. And what did the condition, the asper, just how did you say it? Aspergillosis. Yes. It's just the lungs being affected. Yes, holes in the lungs. Holes in the lungs. Yeah, the other mm -hmm. option they had said was an operation for a lung transplant. Okay. But it was impossible because her right. oxygen levels were very low. And she has, you said you have two children, so there was a younger, yes, yes, younger daughter. Yes, her sister is now 13, mm -hmm. so she was with me in the whole journey. How was it for her seeing her older sister go through this? It wasn't easy. Like even I would get calls from the teacher asking me what's wrong with Faith. She's called Faith, so they were like she's dropping, mm. her mind is not in class, mm. you know, such things. Then she would tell me when she comes home, she just becomes like sad watching her sister going through that. Yeah. And she had been her rock, you know, someone you can count on, they would talk about anything. Yeah. But watching her deteriorating, it was it affected so her. hard. But how were you behind closed curtains or away from your children? How were you dealing and coping? I was dying inside. Mm. <laughs> I was like, okay, we are usually told not to ask God why, but obviously we'd be like, wow, like, is this really happening? Like, Yani, they just had to choose my daughter to go through that. Wow. But, and then hearing stories, people can comment, like, maybe you're cast, you know. Really? Yeah, they would say, like, it's not normal getting married to such a tribe, you know, like, mm. they, wow. d they just comment, like, to make you weak. But I would always say, no, it, maybe it's meant to be, maybe I'm supposed to learn something. Maybe really? I'm supposed to inspire somebody. I don't know. Really? Yeah, I'm just waiting. I, I hope I just see my purpose one day. Where would you attribute that from? I would actually say Those I have... Those are painful uh, yeah, comments. It is. They are so painful. Yeah. But you just turn a deaf ear. Okay. My, one of my strengths has been my sister. Okay. She's also so spiritual. So okay. she'd be walk with me through the journey. And I was working most of the time. So she was the one taking care of her. Of your daughter? Yeah, exactly. Um, at what point did it get worse? Actually, funny enough, mm -hmm. in 2020 October, we had celebrated her 20th birthday. We actually did a very good photo shoot. She was mm -hmm. healthy. In October 2020, we were so healthy, mm -hmm. fine. And then in December, we went to Mombasa, and okay. our acquaintance invited us to Nyali. Okay. So the problem started there in Nyali. What happened? She could stand mm -hmm. and then a leg would bend. Then she okay. falls down, you're like, I. Then she would say, I'm okay, I'm okay. You know, she wouldn't want to worry me, mm -hmm. like, I'm okay. Even her, she doesn't know what's happening to mm -hmm. her body. Yeah. So we actually didn't enjoy that holy because I was always holding her. I see. So when we came back from the trip, all went just hell blo broke loose. So. Yeah. She just couldn't walk, she couldn't sit. Her spine was damaged also. When you sit her, she mm. would slide, like there's oh. no support. Then you see her sweating. Oh my, yeah. she was struggling. She was really struggling. You could see in her face and her expressions, but she's trying to be strong for me, you know. But I told her, it's okay. So when we, in the journey, you know, you go seeking a lot. So later we were told that the drugs destroyed her nerves. Mm. So the nerves yeah, became, they from couldn't. the lungs, now exactly. the spinal cord. Exactly. And then she couldn't even feel the, so she was on pampas, actually. She was just like a dead body, just there. She couldn't do anything for herself. Oh, goodness. Yeah, so watching her, 
sometimes my uh, we were alone with her sister she would help me carry her you know like washing her mm. so it was so hard but it's like somehow preparation mm. it's like we were prepared mentally like she's going you could see she's not herself yeah. even when you look at her she's not there wow. so that's, that's it was hard. so tough that's still not easy even it's though not easy it's a preparation journey exactly let's take a short break and um, hear how you got to that place welcome back um so it got worse to the point where she can walk she can sit pretty much you have to do everything for her exactly um, how was that season a period of your life how did you have a support system was there a stigma in that season how was it like there's a hospital we we were told about it's called women ed eh? They handle the condition in uh, like deep, deep rooted. Eh? Okay. So what they did, mm. they started on supplements. So she had to ref to get rid of all those drugs. Okay. So yeah. we used to take her by a wheelchair. Okay. We used to carry her in the car. Okay. Then when we are taking her to hospital, yeah. everyone is staring. You know. Yeah. Like they're seeing a young girl, and she had wounds here around the legs. Mm. So even if you dress her with trousers, they would still show at the ankle, you know. Mm -hmm. So everyone was there. She was just down like, she was always just broken. So watching her, it wasn't that easy. The stigma, even the doctor commented like, this is a 20 year old and she has a disease for like an 80 year old. Really? You know, such comments. So we just showed her like we're still there. And then the church, my church really came through. They stood with you? Yes. They actually contributed some money because mm -hmm. I sought help. You know, the money was just, I was just drained financially. Yeah, I can imagine. Because looking at her every day, her diet, everything. So I thank God for my church okay. and as, for my sister and her youth friends actually. They stepped actually, in. Yeah, they stepped in and there's a pastor who came to see her. And so it was a spiritual journey somehow. It was. Yeah. And for all of this to happen in the midst of a pandemic, this happened last year, isn't yes, it? Yes, it did. Um, she passed on in March. Yes. Take us to that moment where okay. both you and your younger daughter yes. were present. Mm -hmm. How did it happen? It actually, she passed on in the house. Okay. I had bought a chair, it's an L-shaped, eh, to make her a bit comfortable. It was, okay. you know, like it's somehow like a bed, yeah. somehow like this one. Yeah. So she passed on there. Like we watched her taking her last breath. Really? Yeah, so you can imagine her sister. She's jaribuing, she's trying to pepeta her, you know, yeah. to fan her, yeah. saying, God, no, no, she's crying. Me, I'm just there. I was just shocked. You know, you can't talk. Mm -hmm. You're just looking like, you can't even believe like it has happened. Yeah. Yeah. So we just watched her. Me, I think I was just, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Were there signs of it before it happened? There were signs. Did you signs. see it coming? Yeah. I saw it coming, actually, because mm -hmm. she was somehow asthmatic also. Okay. So every time she would, and we were told not to use drugs on her anymore. You know, the what, the, uh, what do you call it? The inhaler mm -hmm. has some chemicals. So we're just making her weaker. Yes. Mm -hmm. So she would catch, she would look for breath every time she kept saying, it's hot, it's hot. And then that night, she held my hand like this. It was so cold. Mm. I was like, <laughs> maybe she's telling me something. She's trying to say, I'm in pain. I don't know where, you know. Mm. So it was, okay, we were prepared because also there's another sister of mine who used to come to take uh, the communion with us. So it's like it's literally was the last supper. Really? So it was so spiritual. Like, I don't know how to react in such a situation, but mm. watching her, I didn't even cry, to be honest. What was your response? I was somehow bitter, yeah. Were you bitter at? I was handling, I was angry at God, to be honest. Because mm. <laughs> I was expected. like, this yeah. had to happen to me, you know. We were best friends, we used to do everything together. Mm. But I'm glad, like, okay, I later I, I started accepting Kidogo Kidogo. Mm -hmm. Like, now she's in heaven. God wanted her to be there. Because she was also very, like, the places she'd want to go mm -hmm. were retreats for church. In fact, yeah, you, yeah. Um, prior to her death, there were a couple other than yes. her body being cold. Exactly. There were some signs that you, you yes, saw. Yes, yes. What were they? 
okay, she would talk like you feeling like she's not the one talking. What do you mean? Because there's a time she told me to find a distraction. What do you mean? Like she's not going to be there, you know. Oh, telling you to find yes, something to do. Something like to distract myself completely. Oh, wow. And then when she would talk, you'd feel it's not her talking, it's her spirit. How so? Explain. Like she would see... The you, things she would say yeah, or her voice? Yeah, even the voice, the, the body. She's not there. She, when you, she's standing, like the pastor told us, she's with God there mm. on the chair. Mm. As we are not seeing it, but her, she's seeing it. What things would she say that would make you... Basically yeah. even wanting us to do fellowship together. Like okay. quoting Bible verses, mm -hmm. songs. Like there's a song she would like singing in that one. Spirit lead me. Okay. When you listen to it, it's so deep. It is. Yeah. It's a very deep song. So she would sing, she would seek God more. Okay. Which would, wasn't her naturally. Okay, that she was, was a bit crazy <laughs> before. <laughs> really? Yeah, okay, she would. Okay, she, you know the way she, uh, teenagers are wild. Mm. She'd want to go to some parties. Mm. But at the end of the, the, the day, journey, yeah. yeah, on her 19th birthday, I took her to a club. But she said it's not her place. She doesn't want to go to such places. She'd rather go to the library okay. or to a retreat to seek God. Like, she felt God's presence. So her personality completely changed? It completely changed. And the retreats, tell me about the places she'd want to go. Okay, mostly it's a place called Wendo. Okay. It's a Christian retreat in Nakuru. So what would happen to, when she went there? She used to go, it's a, like a quiet place. You're not even allowed to use phones. Okay. So it's like a total prayer mm. and fellowships with the fellow people who are there. So yeah, she would come in peace. She'd be like, I feel God, I want to go there. So I just used to support her with transport How did every this... time she, used to go, she wanted to go. And she told you... Look for a distraction. Yes. She got off social media. Yes. Tell me about that. Why did she, she actually, make... her phone died. Okay. It just died like three months before the sickness. Mm -hmm. Her phone just died. It wouldn't be repaired. And she would also, also say, like there's a, there's a lady who commented in her IG. She inboxed her. She's like, how come you're lost? She's like, I'm sick. I can't walk. Then the friend was like, how can you suddenly not walk? Mm. You know? So you could feel small comments like those uh, would damage her. her. Yeah. So okay. she was like, me, I don't want to be in social media. Okay. Yeah. So how was that, the final moments, the burial of saying goodbye, what oh was that my. like for you and your daughter? It was so tough because, okay, before, by the way, before the hears came, eh, we called an ambulance. Okay. Yeah. When she took her last breath? Yes, mm -hmm. but we were like, they somehow her pulse, she's still a bit warm, so we had some little hope. Okay, okay, me, I knew she was gone, but my sister kept saying, no, she's not gone. When the ambulance came, they tried to resuscitate her, and then? but all in vain. So in that process, we had to get her a burial permit, because it was the COVID time. I see, yes. My sis ran, she was actually a, such a strong support, I don't know what I could have done without her. So she went to the police station, mm. we got the permit, and then that's when the hears came. Watching her being carried from that chair, you know they covered the whole yeah. body with a, I think an orange thing, I don't mm. know what it is. What was that like? Eh, it was hard. Carrying her from the, now from the house to the hears, it was just, I felt, you know the way you feel like you're also dying. Mm. I felt my body, I couldn't even wake up. My sisters, I have three sisters here, so they were holding me. I'm sorry. Yeah, so from the journey from, to the hears, from the hears to the hospital, it was tough. Like watching that, the, it's a dead body now there. Yeah, it's no, not high anymore. It's not easy. So when we took her to the, she stayed for like for three days because mm. we buried her on Saturday. That's the Saturday. Yeah. We organized, at least the church was there, we, they called a pastor, then he came, he did the service, but we had to go to the mortuary first, of course, to view her body, and she was wearing a long white dress. She actually looked like an angel, and she's like, she looked like she was sleeping. She looked at peace. Yeah, she looked at so much peace. And by the way, when she used to sleep, she never used to close her eyes. 
Okay. Yeah, every when she was alive. Really? But that time in the coffin, her eyes were closed. Okay, they told me it's mm. a thing they do in the mortuary. I don't mm. remember the name. But she was that you'd feel she's at peace. So it's, what happened that made you know she's in a better place? Just the peace. And then, in the journey, I've never had nightmares. You know, the way you can know you're haunted and stuff. Yeah. Then there's a time she appeared in my dream and told me she's happy now and she's um, in a better place. Like Queen, she quoted a queen in the Bible, but I don't remember. So mm -hmm. she's like, Mom, don't worry. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Like Queen, the name just disappeared, but it's like in the Bible. So I relaxed from that time. And I know like she's not haunting us. You know those evil dreams. Mm -hmm. So we just have peace. I sleep well. Really? That's how you know you're at peace. What did this do for your faith? You mentioned you were bitter um, and angry at God. When yeah. you lost your daughter, what did that do? Okay. I, I thought, okay, when, you, when you're in this journey, you have to talk to people. Mm. Now, there's a lady I talked to, the brother died of the same condition. There's a part I was blaming myself. Maybe if she was in hospital, she couldn't have died. Mm. But she told me the brother also died, but he was with the tubes and everything, but he still died. Yeah. Then there's a lady who told me the journey, she lost her son, mm. father, and uh, husband in a span of one year. So God spoke to her and told her, you know, I had lent you that child, mm. you know. So I, I, read, I realized later, like, we are stewardesses, That's stewards true. and stewardesses. That's so true. when God wants to take, when it's, it's time, there's nothing you can do. That's true. Yeah. It's not an easy place to, it's not easy. to come to and accept. Exactly. That is the truth. Yeah. What is your mantra during her sickness journey that would help you get by each day it's her herself yeah. though she kept saying god is there mm. she never cast you know the way you're like mm. you're angry you're like she never went I, through she never she just used to say mom don't worry god is there and that's what kept ringing in my head mm. god is there god is there so it kept me going and also her small sister of course yeah yeah how is she now She's okay, she's performing well, but sometimes she says she misses her. I'm sure. At first she would break down. She's like, I miss my sister, who will help me choose clothes? You know, you're like, gosh, you're also not strong yet, but you just have to show her. But she kept, she prays a lot. Even yeah. when you listen to her praying, you just feel like she's, she loves God so much. You've done a good job, Mom. Thank you so much. We'll be right back, stay right there. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. Now, before the break, um, you've pretty much recounted how it was like um, losing your daughter. Yes. I can't imagine how it must have been like taking a toll on you, taking care of her for all those years, mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, financially. Exactly. How did you handle, handle it all? My daughter, mm -hmm. I had, uh, my now this 13-year-old, yeah. she has some faith. talents. Yes, okay. faith. So I've been taking her to events like modeling, Oh. So most of the times we used to spend time with her, I doing see. clips when we are singing. Oh, wow. So we used to be distracted in a way, mm. like even to keep her mind off things, mm. doing photo shoots, like she has done some shoots for some fashion houses. I see. But mostly modeling, she used to go for training. I see. So every time, okay, there's a time I felt bad because my firstborn commented, she's like, okay, I'm always left out. Mm. But later she yeah. accepted, like, just go. I'm blessing you, have a good day with faith. Okay. So she just started also accepting, like, anyway, I know I can't join you, but just take her. Mm. I want her to prosper. How is your daughter, how was she affected by seeing her own sister pass on? Did that affect her? And how of have you course. helped her overcome? Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah, as I'm saying, we used to distract, like, I, I actually started TikTok because of her. Aww. So we used to do videos together, oh, dancing. Cute. I used to put her, I, I don't want her to forget, mm. but I want her to show her, to show her like we have to move on. In fact, what I usually tell her is that she's not coming back because mm. she would go and close herself in the room. She's crying. She's like, you find she's thrown all the clothes. She's like, oh, it help me, you know. Then she used to get some advice like, I'm sorry to mention this, she had told her, mm. like, I'd be there when you start your menses. Oh. You see, so she was hoping she'll guide her, her like, how to put the, you know, yeah. those things. 
So how has this, I guess, in turn affected or impacted your relationship with, with Faith? How is we it now? We bonded more. I can imagine. And she usually even tells me, she's accepted death is there. Mm. So she's like, we'll die together. <laughs> You know, stuff like that. I knew. Yeah. Oh. Like if I die, she can't leave. As in, oh. she just knows like we are in this journey together. So yeah. her prayer is like either God comes and finds us and takes us together <laughs> or we die together. I don't know. Oh. But she can't. She's You've gotten she, very close. Exactly. That loss can be a bad thing to her. She's like, she knows death is there. Mm. But how she can't handle it like when I'm not there. I so I try to be her rock. I know I can't always be there. Maybe sometimes I'm looking for work. Yeah. But she has to find that I'm there. I always tell her I love her. Okay. I am, I'm there for her. I support her where I can. Good. When I don't have, she knows. She knows, Mom, I know when you have, you work hard. So okay. she knows I'm there for her. Has it affected her studies or her social life? Yes, yeah. somehow. I'm In sure. fact, she pulls away from people. There's mm. a teacher who called me the other day. She's like, Faith doesn't talk to people. Mm. So he realized also, because he's had some psychology, she's yeah. like, she has to really trust somebody to That's open true. up. Have yeah. you sought counseling? You uh, not really. Both I'm of scared you. of counseling because I think I would cry more. It's like reminding me. Mm. Going through the pain yeah. again. But it's healthy, it's necessary mm. for both of you to get professional help to walk the healing journey, no? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe. But you're not ready when you're ready. <laughs> yeah, because I think I'd cry more. Which is fine. <laughs> it's a way of letting it out. Okay, maybe with time, but yeah, maybe we will. So how have you been dealing with the healing? How is your healing journey going then? The healing journey is just talking to God okay. and just moving on. You just have to move on. Yeah. And knowing that we have a guardian angel now, mm -hmm. maybe we needed one. Mm -hmm. and just waiting to see what our purpose is. I see. Yeah. What are the hard days like? Do you have days that are very mm -hmm. difficult? Actually, when I listen to songs she used to listen to, it mm -hmm. gets into me. I'm like, wow, she used to love this song. Yeah. Yeah, mostly that's what the, the hardest thing is. And of course her clothes. Mm -hmm. cause How was that, uh, putting her things away? I actually didn't give them out. Because I was like, her sister is also growing. She was also like, so there's no way. Like, you can't just bury. People say, like, you have to forget the past. Mm. Like, but you've been with this person for like 20 years. Imagine. So we just have to accept the memories and just move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, there are some pictures we have in the house. Okay. It's not easy, but it's acceptance. How would you describe the loss of a child? A. It's a pain that doesn't go away. Mm. It just, there's a hole. It's like, I don't know, I can't explain. It's so empty. Because mm. this is somebody you would talk to like adults. You know, she knew a lot. Mm. We would confide. But she's no longer there. So it's her very hard. Very, very hard. Very, very hard. I know. Mm -hmm. How are you and God now? I think I'm closer. I'm not there yet, but I'm closer mm -hmm. to him. I'm seeking him more. Okay. Yeah. I just want to seek him more. After witnessing your own child mm. pass. Yes. Um, I mean, that's an experience I, I can't begin to imagine. Of but course. Does it leave you with any fears or uncertainties? Yes, I fear. Yeah, what fears do you this other daughter. Mm. <laughs> Every time I see phone calls from school, I don't even want to pick. You panic? I panic, yeah. Wow. Because hmm? there's a time even in school I used to be called. I don't know, there's a time my, my big daughter hmm. just fell okay. in the supermarket. And then, you know, people are so weird. They're like, is she pregnant? They're surrounding her. You're like, seriously? Oh, boy. And then there's a day she had also died unconsciously. I'm waking her up. She's not waking up. We went, she was injected. Mm -hmm. Her blood was low, such things. So I get scared watching my little one, wondering how long she'll be here, will mm. it happen to her? There are so, there are those worries, but I just pray like God, like to let the fear go away, mm. give me courage to face another day. Yeah. Yeah. What, I know it's not been an easy, it's going to be a year. Yes. Um, soon. Yeah. What has been your greatest encouragement through that? 
or through this painful um, experience? Actually, on, on the first anniversary this March, we yeah. went to visit our grave. So when you when you go to the grave, you're like, anyway, she's not she's no longer here. She's, not there, yeah. she's somewhere. It's somebody told me it's just a transition. Yeah. She transited straight, uh, from here to heaven because mm -hmm. we are sure she went there. Yeah. So you you just push on, mm -hmm. and then you get back on your feet. How are you doing that? Okay, I'm just getting. Okay, my finances went low here, see, and I wasn't mentally prepared to work. So I'm just mm, getting it takes back. Time. Yes, because yeah, that's I'm a plus size model. Mm. So I just I work for fa I model for fashion houses. I see. So getting those gigs again is a bit hard, mm. but I'm praying for God's mercy to to see me through. Okay. Yeah. What it, are you? At mm. first it was consistent. Eh? I could get calls like even three times a week. I see. But these days it's it's much less. But I'm still like, I've, I've started selling plus size dresses, which I'm praying picks up. I'm praying for God's hand okay. just to place his hands on us. How are you feeling today? Um, I feel strong that yeah. I can also talk about it. Yeah. There's a time I just shut down. Mm. Like, you know, the dad is in UK, I forgot to mention. So when he used to call, I couldn't even talk. Mm. So my sister is the one who used to pick calls. So right now I can't even pick calls, but that time I was like, he. But I, I, it must have been worse for him. You can imagine, he wasn't he here. Away, yeah, yeah sure. so they just contributed also for the funeral expenses. Hey, it was hard. What gives you the strength, inspiration, and motivation to share your story here today to those at home watching? Because I, I can imagine mothers who have lost their, their children, mm -hmm. especially I watched Kambua talking. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, she's that strong, she <laughs> you is, know? She is, isn't she? Yeah, so I was like, then I'm encouraged, like, I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. So I think we should, I was actually looking for a name, the way when your husband died, you're a widow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there's no name for parents who We've lost a child. Yeah, so. That's so I was trying to explain how can I say what am I like yeah. I'm not a widow I'm not a, but I've lost a child That's so, true. so watching other people's stories yeah. maybe they'll be encouraged like you can still smile yeah. yeah I always like smiling so that my daughter especially I don't like her seeing me sad okay. it's just a way of it's a perseverance smile I guess mm. yeah so I just like keeping it with me okay. and showing that God can still glorify you in other ways amen. yeah amen but i hope you're still dealing with all the emotions that come yes because if you don't deal with them yeah at some point it will come out in one way or another yeah but you're right keep, yes. keep the hope and the smile thank you so much what can you tell someone at home now like you mentioned there are parents out there who yes. have gone through something similar mm -hmm. what can you tell them today i can just tell them to seek god mm -hmm. but don't ask him why just ask him to show you, like, show me what, what, what led to losing my daughter. Okay. Like this lady who I told you, mm. she lost her son. Mm. In fact, he died in a road accident and he was to graduate. Oh. She was given a Bible verse to, by God. Okay. I don't, don't remember which one it is, so I just pray you ask God. Show like, me show me and what's my purpose. Mm. If, you, if you live your life without knowing your purpose, you'll just be empty. That's true. Maybe I'll inspire somebody, people will start coming out to talk about it, because you can't heal without talking about it. Mm. It's, past, it's part of the healing process. They say the two most important days are when you're born and when you discover why. Exactly. So have you discovered why? I think I'm yet to discover. <laughs> you're on that journey. Yes. Because yeah. there's a time we almost, I had an accident in a bus. It was a very bad one and I didn't die. So I was like, okay, I'm still here to see my purpose. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So basically, I'm just remaining to be my other daughter's caretaker. The time God has given me with her, I just want to cherish it. Mm. And also appreciate those moments with your loved ones. That's true. And tell them that you love them. Show That's them true. before it's too late. That's true. Yeah. What are you thankful for in this season? I know it's hard to ask that, but even what mm. is your silver lining? What are you grateful for still? I'm thankful that I have another child. 
that's true. <laughs> you can imagine if I don't have, so I'm not that empty. Mm. Okay, the emptiness is like 60%. Probably I'd be so empty. I hear you. But at least she's, because she's also adopting some habits my firstborn had. Like, like what? Like being aggressive. Okay, she go, being a go-getter. Okay. And you can also feel, she used to like dancing. Okay. And uh, singing. She actually loves mm -hmm. music. Okay. So she's adopting some behaviors. And dancing. you're like, wow. Even her voice, it's yeah. like somehow it's going to sound be, like a Yeah, there's sister. a time I was like, I did Mubese just enter into <laughs> faith. Really? Yeah, so it's like she has... You were seeing your older daughter and your exactly. younger daughter. So she's adopting those characters. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, so that's what comforts me, that she's still in her. She's still in her? Yes. If she was here today, Mubesi. Yes, Mubesi. What would you tell her? I would tell her that she's taught me to be courageous mm. and to be humble. Really? Yes. Because okay. she used to be very... And she's actually brought me closer to God. Because okay. my relationship was not that strong. Mm. Yeah, so... I would thank her for showing me what it is to be a mother. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you too. Um, we wish you healing, both thank you, you and your and faith. Thank you. And um, just um, blessings and overcoming and restoration in this new season. Amen. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you too. Thank you for watching. Mm. I hope she's talked to someone who. She mentioned Kambua, maybe you've lost a child and you don't know how to cope. I hope her story has encouraged you today. Um, thank you for making time for us. Thank you, Radisson Blue, for hosting us. Until next week, take care of yourselves. Good night and God bless.